All right. Okay. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, the 17th of September. So no major announcements on our side. Today, as usual, want everyone to talk um, and would like everyone should be by today. Super important. Everyone should have decided which career track they want to pursue. If you don't know which career track you want to pursue, that you, we need to make a decision today. If you need any guidance, reach out. Um, let us decide and let's focus on one one thing. Um, today on the stand-up, in addition to if anyone has anything that they want to share, blockers, um, how their profile work is going, I'd really like to hear as you work on your T-shaped profiles and you start to look at your the work that you've done, improving some of the projects that you, or the presentation of the projects on your GitHub, I want everyone to tell us about <coughs> one skill that they feel they need to improve on to get them job ready. So one skill that they've identified as a gap. In addition to that, uh, one of the trainees asked a question that we're going to answer, or Yabibel is going to come on and answer that question today as well. So, but let's get started. So let's hear about one skill that, uh, one gap in your skill portfolio that you want to work on and how you're going to fill that gap. So let's get started. Who wants to get started? Everyone, everyone should talk. If you can't talk, please type. <coughs> We have two weeks left, and so this is it's a much safer place here to get used to talking among your colleagues and friends. If you're not comfortable speaking, it's not going to be better um, in a work environment. Practice speaking here. So who wants to go first? Let's see a line of hands, please. Not now? Okay, good morning, Gara. Morning. Yeah, okay, so uh, yesterday I have been uh, uh, trying to work on the profile page and uh, yeah, I'm having some uh, difficulties or issues like briefly articulating about uh, that enjoying pause and to signify it on my uh, about section, but I will be working on it today also. And I have been fixing my GitHub and everything. Uh, so uh, things I would like to work on that will help me on the job in the future are like uh, deep learning. I want to know more on the TensorFlow uh, thing. Uh, I'm working on that. And also the Dockerization process. And I need to work on Docker. Yeah, that's all my stuff. OK, so deep learning and uh, Dockerization. Great, very specific. What? How are you going to learn those two techniques? What are you going to do to fill that gap? Mainly YouTube tutorials and uh, reaching out to trainers, other trainers. Okay. Get a look on DataCam? I haven't, or I, I will look up what the DataCam. Okay. Okay. Great. Who's next? Same. We'll go with same, then Jakinda. Good morning, everyone. Um, morning. So yesterday, I did make some progress in rewriting some of the project descriptions and wrote some for the projects that I hadn't included so far. I am slightly behind the schedule I set out for everything I was supposed to do. I was supposed to be. I, I was supposed to have reviewed everything by yesterday, but I haven't completed it that until now. Um, for today, I've planned on may, maybe making minor modifications to my CV since I had already modified it before. And some of the GitHub readmes still haven't been updated. So I'm going to do that today what uh, for the gaps that I see in my knowledge similar to what not Nail said I have I don't th think I have a good grasp on it as much as I would like and in addition to that I feel like there is a 
might be lacking and which I will consider learning more about. I'm considering mostly for the theoretical parts, books instead of videos, because I think they're sometimes a better way for me to learn theoretical concepts. You said um, there's your or, connection broke in the middle. There's a gap in what? In which skill? Oh, um, my understanding of deep learning, similar to what Nat Nail said. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that as well, uh, I feel like a theoretical background in some of the things that I've done so far, I think tend to be lacking. So those things need, I feel like, I need to cover, and I'm going to probably be using books to cover that. Probably some of the books mentioned in the machine subreddit, they have a list, and I think going through some of them would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Other than that, maybe building a small thing afterwards, a small project, that utilizes all of the things I learned would be a good idea as well. I have seen the data camp and I'm considering taking a couple of the courses as well because they'll probably be useful. And having okay. that somebody certify that you learned something is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so what I hear from both Nadal and Same is that there's a both both of you are thinking very much on the technical side and there's this feeling that one has to understand the foundational theory um before to be able to apply it so i would just ask you to revisit that that assumption um and why why is that necessarily the case to what extent does one really need to understand this theory to take up an entry-level job um so revisit that assumption and also think about dockerization and the foundations of deep learning, whether to what extent is that the one gap that's really preventing you from getting job ready? Um, are there other skills that may be uh, equal, equally or more important? So I would, I would spend a little bit of time reflecting on that. Uh, who wants to go next? Jakinda was next. Uh, good morning, everyone. Morning. Uh, yeah, for my case, uh, yesterday I was uh, doing some reading on data engineering and uh, machine learning, uh, trying to like uh, get the the perfect spot that uh, I'll fit in. And uh, because I had some doubts, and I think I'll still talk to you during office hours. Um, yeah, so I've just been, uh, I was adding the projects uh, concerning data engineering on my profile. I just need to do some proofreading. Today afternoon, I'm planning to record the video. And uh, the things that I feel are lacking for me too, I think it's also the issue of uh, deep learning. I just need to understand it because I feel like uh, it was rush, rush for me. So I need to do that. I need to understand a little bit of Docker. And I think uh, finally, yeah, I'll just brush on my SQL skills because uh, yeah, just a little. I, I love SQL, so it's just touch and go, touch and go here and there. So I think uh, with that, I might be in a good position because I understand that most uh, technical interviews involve such areas. So SQL is always heavy. So you have to like know your commands and stuff like that. And also just some little of uh, Python and deep learning stuff. So yeah, that's what I'll be doing from today to the weekend to Sunday. Yeah. Jikin, Jikin, a quick question. If you want to go for data engineering, why do you need to, why do you want deep learning? No, uh, it was, uh, during the projects that you did deep learning on, uh, I didn't really get, I, I didn't really uh, get the understanding that I wanted. So it's been something that I want to do. And also given the fact that uh, I would like in the future to transition from data engineering to, to machine learning, I think that, uh, it's also a skill that uh, I, I I have to like get familiar with as time goes by. Why do you want to transition? Um, we'll talk about that during office hours. Yeah, I, what, one point that I've made to a number of people yesterday, and I want to make the same point here. Um, there, there may be a perception that one career is superior to the other career. 
I would rather view it as a heart specialist versus a kidney specialist. It's true you need the heart, but you also need the kidney. So I wouldn't, um, I would encourage everyone here to drop this view of which one is superior to others. I think people are doing different things. Uh, uh, okay, okay, but uh, yeah, I'll just talk to you. And then maybe after our talk, we can decide on which one is better. Yeah, you have one? I mean, I, I think, I mean, of course I would like to hear more and comment more, but again, even perception, so, I think I would see it even slightly differently that your next job is all you have to optimize now, nothing more. If, if you don't like it about career thinking, just forget even career in some way. Like, I mean, it's not, it's like, but just think about your next job. And your next job is this data is going to be more in data engineering or in machine learning engineering. Again, even that, depending on a company, there is no such distinction. It's depending on the company, right? If the company is big, definitely you specialize on that, right? Because there are people doing it better, um, doing deep learning. And so if you are in data engineering, you are expected and you are evaluated. Your performance is evaluated on how much you do in, in kind of data engineering. So if it's hard for you to think, I think, for example, Jacinda's example for me is perfect example that most people probably would be thinking, you're, that, that really shows that, of course, there's no, you know, it's just an artificial labeling in your head. And so the seamless change between like, okay, deep learning, this is cool, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna know it, and SQL, I wanna know it, you know, like this data engineering, I wanna know it. So it is okay, like I, mean, I don't expect you even to know much more than that, but the whole point from our side would be Okay, your next job, choose your next job because it's easier to really optimize. You don't have enough time. Even the T-shaped thing, it's great, but you're not going to be T. I think more you would be like um, a lot flat and then just a very tiny kind of extension, like in one spot. But you're not going to be even T. I mean, T requires PhD, like real T. So again, what we want is like, okay, wherever you want, like to be seen, like in the, in the example case would be like um, data engineering, then that dot or that bar that is extending should be in data engineering. Like if you are interested in data engineering, if it's machine learning engineering, and such that when you present yourself, then you convince that you have all it takes, you know, to actually just spend there and be valuable. So I think Thinking of it as a long-term investment and optimization, it's always about optimization, amount of time, and then what, you know, how much time that you have, and then how much um, can you do over that time. And it's a very small time, like probably a month, even just two weeks, whatever, and you really, really have to focus on kind of polishing your portfolio to suit that, your vocabularies to suit your interviews, and nothing more, otherwise it's just, you, you, you're not going to get both of them. So I think, think of it, if nothing, if that is difficult, the career thinking and, and data engineering, machine learning engineering, think of it, where do you want to be your next job? And optimize for that, forget the, what comes after, because that is very, very complex. Um, I mean, wherever, in whichever company you go, you'd probably be doing many, many things like that you expect now. So it's about optimizing um, your portfolio and your image to the next job. I think I see. I, I think maybe that's easier to see. Like that's at least uh, how I think. Does anyone want to do, disagree with the Abubal? I would love that. <laughs> Abu Bakr, come on. I guess you're in. It's a perfect. It's the perfect time to disagree. Um. Okay, so Dibra's just typed. Who wants to go next? So we want to hear from everyone. So let's let's go through quick, quick. Elias. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Okay. Yesterday I was working on my portfolio page. I think it's like where I want it to be. The structure is, but still, there is something missing. So I will keep working on that, and I think it will probably take me the weekend to complete. So on the gap, I see all my knowledge, like. 
I haven't used Jenkins before, so I know it's an automation tool. So I probably need to read a little bit on that. And the other thing is like, I have some experience in PyTorch and R, but not that good at it. So, and also in every job description, I see R as a requirement. So um, I've already started reading, so I probably need to read a little bit more on those. Does it say R is it? But uh, yeah, well, go ahead. Uh, sorry. Um, again, I would say job descriptions are endless some, sometimes. And all that is needed probably is, I mean, great. I think the way that LSU said it is good. That means I'm going to read a little bit. I think I like that. So all you need to do is that, okay, you know, how, how much confident are you, for example, if the example or if somebody writes R code to just read it at the time when you need it and, you know, implement it. And you just should be able to, uh, to say, I, I know I'm, I'm good at coding and, you know, so I can understand and the formats of R, I have used it a little bit or I've seen it. Even just the confidence, I, I don't know it, but I have transitioned from code to code very quickly. So it, it's okay. That is sometimes all needed, except of course the, the task is just the job is saying like, you know, R specialist. In that case, just, you know, turn it down. Don't apply because, you know, you don't want to extend too much. You don't want to work too much because for all job descriptions, technologies and programming language, probably they're going to be, you're not going to be wasting time because, you know, it takes a lot of time to actually do something. Even if you do something, you didn't do project and nobody believes you that you know R. So, like, how do you optimize it? It's just much more of like, okay, you know, for all tasks or for all jobs, R is kind of nice. And if they ask you, then have prepare some answer. In that case, I mean, your, your way of like, okay, a little bit understanding, you know, what is that, how is R different from, for example, Python, might help you just, just to explain, but be always honest that you haven't used it, you haven't built the project, or you probably did something, but you know you transition from one, one language to another very easily, so it's not going to be um, that difficult. So that is, again, it's about focus that I see sometimes where you are good at, it's sufficient, I think we believe, or I, I believe that it is sufficient with the kind of skill you have and with the kind of knowledge that is required. Of course, some things like related, like MA logs, accepted. for example, Jenkins, other people would ask you something else. But as long as you know how, to, how these all tools like CICD tools work, like if you use one, for example, GitHub Actions, well, I would say Jenkins is just an extension um, and probably it's not getting too much less used Jenkins than others. So you can again argue, it's like, yes, you know, you know, you have heard about Jenkins, but you have used some other tools that you are, you know, comfortable. If you, if you have time to do it, great. But again, I would say like, focus a lot more on like where you want to work. And again, you know, the job descriptions comes and there are certain technologies that are a lot more in that area needed. For example, type PyTorch or TensorFlow. You probably, if you are getting in that kind of deep learning area, you should really spend more time there because people would really like, they know that you can't learn quickly unless you use them. And if that is your main uh, job will be. So just I'll stop there. Great, <clears throat> who's next? So we'd like everyone to speak. I've said it a number of times, it's really important to practice speaking in this stand-up environment. I haven't heard anyone talk about communication skills, and this is something that most of our guest speakers have mentioned. Technical skills, fine, but if you can't communicate with your colleagues, how are you going to explain uh, what you're doing? But how can you also, you need to work with your colleagues and work with people from other teams. Communication is important. It's, uh, and to a large extent, you can fake a lot of your technical skills if you're a good communicator. And I don't mean fake in a negative context, but rather you can bridge that gap. So Kristen, you need to practice. So please speak. You go you go next. Practice. There's no magic. There's no book. There's no book. There's no tutorial. There's no YouTube video. There's it's practice. So Christian, please. Uh Christian and then Jerusalem. Yes. Good morning. How are you? Very good. How are you? Yes, I'm good too. 
Um, yesterday I was working on my GitHub. Uh, I would like just to maybe um, handle those kind of concepts. I've been not, I didn't make it very well, like stream it. And also, I think those kind of tasks also he asked me just to do, and I was not able to do that. So yesterday I'm working really on my GitHub. And this morning I start working on my portfolio also. And what I can say is just that um, as gap, I have many gap uh, in Python programming. So I'm happy uh, that Zen Academia gets some, I think, some correlation with data camp. So because I already know data camp, so uh, my, my goal now, oh, I think my, one of my target right now is just to use data camp and try to improve also myself and maybe take also some some calls and within me also to improve myself that's all okay yeah good sq uh, python is is important Jerusalem. yeah yeah but, 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 but. hi good morning morning okay let me start with my yesterday's task uh, yesterday I've been doing my CV, uh, I was somewhat trying to relate it uh, with the data engineering uh, skills and experiences and so far uh, I'm doing, I'm still doing on that too and uh, some of the gaps that I've found is I don't have that much skills or experience in data engineering so I decided to take a big data fundamentals with uh, PySpark in data camp and also I do some projects on Kaggle and uh, GitHub. And for the, and I also have to work on the dequalization and uh, CI CD. Uh, and um, this but is for technical. What, what is the one thing? What, where do you want to start? So you, you've mentioned at least three. Where do you yeah, want to start? Yeah, it's just, I want, uh, yeah, I'm going to start with PySpark, as I told you there, with big data fundamentals with PySpark. The first thing that I'm going to do is that. Uh, and uh, I think a scale is uh, included in the big data and the colorization is uh, after that, after the, um, after the course. Uh, but before that, I have to take at least uh, two projects um, by the end of the, uh, this training that are related to data engineering and uh, at least uh, put it in the CV and uh, for soft skills I have to at least read or experience some of the work ethics and uh, self-discipline uh, that's what I told by the industry thank you it sounds like a long list Jerusalem I would encourage you to pick uh, maybe two to focus yes on. yeah I'm just focusing on two and two projects and that are related to data engineering which is a uh, big data uh, of course, with um, PySpark, that includes all the things that I want to have. Right, but you mentioned communication, you mentioned Dockerization. Oh, the, the communication is that I tried all day. I don't know. If this, I think, is a must for me that I have to have some of this self discipline before getting the job. Well, I think you do have a lot of self discipline, otherwise, you wouldn't be here. So, okay, thank please, you. Don't be, don't be too hard on yourself. Okay. Um, so I want to just hand over to Deborah. Deborah asked me a question yesterday about how how can you explain um, how when you've used other people's you've done something that you don't fully understand. How can you explain that during an interview? So Deborah, maybe you can ask that question again, and Yevabel is going to give you his answer. Yeah. Okay. So I asked Arun. Uh, there are implementations that I have done before. Uh, on uh, PyTorch framework that I have adopted somebody else's code and I haven't fully understood the whole thing. I have understood some part of it, but not the whole thing. So how can I explain that uh, as something that I some something that I have done or something that I have implemented to others? Um, I mean that's that's a really a good question, and and the first thing is just to be honest. So just very much nobody wants to 
I think if you are honest and honesty, I think there are different levels. Sometimes people just think honesty means like, oh, I don't understand uh, and this and that. No, honesty means like, I think this code and I don't have time because my goal wasn't, let's say, figuring out that. And it's not just because I was lazy, but it was just, you know, you, you wouldn't say that, but I'm just, I mean, just saying even what is not said, like, you know, what is implicitly understood just so that it makes it clean, clear. So the, your, your first statement would be like, okay, great, yeah. So what is the task I wanted to do is X, Y, Z. And for the task, there are so many, including Python language, which is written by other people, then, you know, PyTorch itself or the engines that you have taken it from someone else. And then some of the codes that are implemented or some of the packages that you haven't written yourself. And someone might only ask you, is like, how much of it did you write, right? How much of the code that you write, like to produce, given, let's say, the label being PyTorch and using the packages and then PyTorch. And then you might say like, no, I think I had this amount of time and all I wanted was, I knew that this works because I have seen the results, but I haven't seen the code. Um, I understand, so did you write, so the first thing is like, if you write, if you take everything from someone else and run it and you only get the result, then you are called an analyst because you basically used something and produced the result. So in that case, you cannot claim that you know you are a coder in that way because, you know, that's, that's not, you haven't written it. But if you have extended it, you still qualify for like saying like, I understand because I understand the code and I, I extended it. If you have modified it, if you understand it, so depending on the level of your understanding, you can qualify to be, if you understand it, you always qualify to be like, at least I know. And the next step is like, did you really write like some of the functions, some of like the classes, some of the extensions? And I think then after that, it's, it's much more of like, how, how you present it. So, but if you have done that, I would say, just be clear. Um, I don't know if that answers Deborah, but I want to, I want you to even go a little bit more and explain if that doesn't answer or if that doesn't um, address with a specific example. You know, how many lines of code or how many, you know, what did you take in that case? And then let's just take it as an example. Yeah, I think I understand. Uh, I have added my own code. So being able to explain what I have understood from the code and what I have taken is enough. Is that what you're saying? It's how critical the code is. Is like to what you do and how much you claim. So let's say that you take a model. A model is basically a Python code or a class. So if that is a, like, let's say, and then you, but in any way you understood the input output and you feed the data, you train it, then you say like, okay, no, you know how to do that. Because, but you, that doesn't mean you know how to implement an algorithm. So you cannot claim with that, that I know how to implement an algorithm. You're unable to say that, but you know how to model, how to use model, or how to use deep learning, and you know model something, because you have the you know the knowledge and the capacity to take someone's code, extend it, make it work, and produce a result. So that's all required for to say that you know you know deep learning or you know you can use deep learning, but it doesn't qualify you, for example, to say to implement uh, an algorithm and a deep learning algorithm or a deep learning architecture into that because you haven't done it so. But if you have even significantly updated it or extended, for example, a layer or added something, then you are getting qualified for that. But does that give more, more insight? Yeah, I think I understand. Great, okay. Thank you. So I can, to Christian or Arun, do you want to Take over? No, no, I just want to ask you just one question. Um, yeah, Baba. Yes, my, okay. my question is asked about the project that we already work. Uh, once we uh, highlight that and put maybe add something, can we share that with you in the market chat in order to, to get your point of view about that? Which project? Sorry. Uh, I, 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 yesterday I worked also on. Uh, telecommunication projects and I would like just to 
to share maybe in the day what I, what I, I bring as new in the project. So, uh, so you mean the extension uh, from, so from week one, you have modified your, your project and stuff? Yes. No, yes, yes. I, I, I did some part with R, you see. And I would like just to, to share that with you. Just, just to a disclaimer, I don't know R. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So no, I, no, I basically no. give no, like, I'm not qualified to give anything on R. No, but I had also some part in Python, so I would like you to, to, to get your point of view about that. Okay, I mean, you can send it, but unfortunately, I am slightly usually crowded, so I might not get back to you, but you can definitely send it to me. Okay. If I have time, I will check it. Thank you so much. So, Sibitinda. Thank you so much. I send my regard to everyone. Uh, my question is about uh, the different projects that we've been able to undertake. If I want them to contribute uh, to my publications, maybe towards the blog, like on Medium, towards that, I don't know, such a platform, um, laying out my blog and showing the steps of my work, then I'm able to find, find it published. <clears throat> so is it like for Ten Academy, we have such a platform? Well, we have all our, our, is it PDFs that we've been creating or blogs, or we recreate them, publish them. Then another in the same question is about, um, sometimes you notice that these blogs are really good quality. Is there like, to, in order to qualify, it has to be a winning blog such that it can be published on their medium. That's what I wanted to ask. Thank you. So very simple is a just submit definitely, you know, with whatever quality you think it's good and you know whatever you can improve. After that, just submit it. I think a lot of the time I don't think you need to be like a winning uh, thing to, to publish. I think it's just a blog. So as long as it's acceptable quality, I think um, it will be published. So your first blog will probably go through some approval. But that's it. I think then it should just be easy after that. I think a lot of a number of people here have actually published in, in Medium. So you can actually, you should ask them, you know, and you should look at their blogs, the style, you know, just to, to see. It's like because you are in the same label here, so you could, it, you might find it actually easy to see the Medium blogs of your peers um, to just to see. So I think. Again, whatever PDF you produce, and it's a good, you know, label to just publish it. Just publish it because the people want to see, you know, your proactive nature, and that's exactly what they want to see. Your GitHub, because your GitHub tells exactly that how much you commit, and we intentionally make you commit, make you branch, make you pull request, make you all of that because that's what people see. You know, they, they trust us a little bit, but they trust really your work. And if your work isn't showing, usually they, you know, it's just question mark, right? So if you blog and if you're, you know, active in different places, you are more like people would just consider, okay, you are a good investor. So I would say, yeah, try to whatever you have, try to polish them and put them and um, it should just be fine. Hopefully that addresses your, your case. Thank you. Okay. So, I am taking over. Arun, are you there? Or I think uh, from Deborah's question. Okay. So, do you mean that uh, we have to write our own code policy? So, unlike academics, I can't see the plagiarism things. So, I'm a bit confused. No, I'm not saying you should write code. I mean, nobody. You always build on abstraction. If you consider it as a layer, it's a layer of abstraction. If if someone implemented a model architecture in deep learning, for example, in TensorFlow, you take that one. But usually, just running that doesn't give you uh, what you want. You probably need to modify it. It's about what I say. It is just about how much you claim something. 
like in a sense like when you explain you say just being honest if you are not asked you're not asked so just don't say it so like but if the one person the person asks you how much of you you write it then you say like okay this i took it from this place and i understand and i extended it and I, it worked you know I, I made it work and amount and then they want to know how much you contributed right how much you understand like did you write anything in python torch or did you just write some wrapper code that just takes everything written for you and then you you kind of ingest it so people want to know how much you know because the different situations at work requires that you probably modify someone's code add you know a little bit of the architecture uh, slightly modify or maybe it's called fine tuning that means you probably need to discard the final layer and you add and train a different layer all that requires that you understand python torch right PyTorch or tensorflow or something so in that case for example if you haven't really done any of that in your project they probably will be like okay you probably don't understand Python Torch because you haven't touched it, right? So you haven't written any code. So that's what I mean. I'm saying use codes, really use codes, but be honest and know, you know how much you modify. And if you're not asked, don't, don't like clearly saying like, oh, I, I, I didn't, you know, I used somebody's code. I think that's just shows your confidence. Your confidence means like if you can make something work, just have that confidence. And if you completely use someone's code, don't at all, like, you know, just don't consider it, don't feature it as yours, because then you don't understand it, and it will be against you. Does that address your case, Samish? Yes, yes, and if you have time, so how, how can maybe I, I prepare for the technical interviews? I, I, I think it's, the first is just knowing what they require. I mean, most of the time they, Again, if it's data engineering, they probably would be asking a lot more data engineering related. So they probably would give you, um, you know, the, the cases, most of the cases that we, we give you are slightly different. But if you, if that is the case, for example, data engineering, you would probably need to prepare, probably see if you can, what technologies they use, what are they interested, you know, in the advertisement, what did they say? If they really featured SQL or some kind of like you know data lake, then have a slightly better understanding of what is data lake, and they probably would give you and something. And um, if it's a machine learning and they're deep learning concerned, then of course you should be a lot more expecting um, something along that line. So understanding the company, that means understanding your audience or like the person or the people who are gonna interview and what they probably are interested in is good. But other than that, of course, you are a junior one. You are not expected to know many things. Um, as long as, of course, you can answer some of the questions honestly and in a good quality. Right? The good quality means it's like, OK, connecting the dots. So you learned x, you learned y, and now they ask you z. You know, how do you interpolate z based on the knowledge? If, of course, it's, it's about you know, how much you can connect. But if you don't know, you might say, like, OK, you can ask them. I think I'm sure Arun has or other uh, courses you have probably taken. How you can ask, investigate to find out a, a little bit more to help you connect. So if it doesn't connect in the first place. You say like, okay, you know, some strategy to ask them like, you know, for what purpose do you want to use it? Like, so what is the business context? Stuff like that that actually shows how you think, right? So in a way. These are slightly artists, but as a junior, what you really need is sometimes to know some of the, the basics, like, I mean, just the critical ones. Like, if you are in data engineering and, you know, if the company says, we want uh, data lake, uh, you know, our data lake engineers to do this, to do that, or SQL, and if you don't know SQL, that's not going to end up. So understanding the company is essential. In, in kind of preparing for that interview. And then there are different strategies, but I would say connecting dots is the key and making sure showing your, you know, your competency in this case, asking the right questions, what is the business context, what is, you know, some of these strategies might help. But this is a big topic that you're asking me. Hopefully it's addressed in some places, in some other um, ones. But Arun, are you there? Is, could, do you want to add something on that? 
Uh, yeah, but I, I, I'm sure. So, what, was there any training or a course or lecture? No, no, no. Or tutorial? He, has, uh, he has the office hours now, so he's doing that. Great. I think there are uh, slight techniques that on, on how to investigate. But I would say being confident is the key. Like, I can tell you, I know less about some things than you, most of you but I will answer them better. Not because I know anything, but because I know how to ask questions, the right question. And I will investigate because I'm not gonna be, oh shit, like I don't know it. No, I know I don't know so many things that I'm confident on how to get there. So it isn't about knowing sometimes, it's about you know understanding the values um, and, and, and how to ask it. So like, of course that's because I have experience, so my, you know, a lot of experience and going when you learn a lot and go to PhD what you really need what you really learn is exactly that you don't know many things so you shouldn't be afraid about what you don't know but it's about presenting what you know well and in the right format if you are just focused about what you don't know people would feel like you don't know really so I would say having that confidence to present what you know connecting dots between what you know is all that is required and it's it's of course you know it's it is understandable if you are nervous and but study a mechanism how to how to get over that nervousness for example you know just be honest sometimes like okay i'm slightly nervous but i'm i'm gonna you know be fine it's kind of that kind of way that just slight honesty can tell you if you are too nervous if you're not that nervous you say like okay you know take some breaks like um, things and it's all that that is more important the people who interview you are most of the time want to help you they are not your enemies they want to help you but they want to really make sure that they hire the best people and therefore you know they want to see how you think so they, they are mapping it's not like you know, you're great in that of course if you are great amazing they want to know but it's also how that they are interested so it's a short and long uh, version, but definitely study a little, little bit of these strategies, how you deal with technical interviews. Thank you. Great. So I think we are way over time, but I don't know if there is any burning question. Yeah. Yeah, I think most of you I expect is really slightly there. It's really a dash shift. Um, I mean, to be honest, it's like some of you probably have done, especially if you come from software engineering, you probably have a certain understanding quite on software. If you're coming from statistics, you probably have a much better, like definitely you will not just always be, it's almost impossible to dash shift for everything. Like, but for ML engineering and data data engineering uh, or deep learning engineering, you might be quite dash shaped given that if you haven't been studying that for a while. And in that case, it's just really interesting. What are you interested? You know, where do you want to try? Yeah, you know, um, basically throw a coin, flip a coin, and just choose one. If if you are just that, I think uh, that's for me fine. If you don't have interest, it's fine. I think most people don't have interest, one that they know, but just it is necessary that you choose one so that you can focus. Optimization, optimizing for everything doesn't work. It's, it's in the terminology, even as I say, it doesn't make sense, right? Optimizing for everything. There is no such thing. You only optimize for something. And the only reason why you need to optimize is because you have a very limited time, therefore you need to, you know, you don't have that much time to, to, to understand everything. So I would say, if nothing, choose one, you know, maybe the names you like, maybe how you want to be called, you know, what, what you want to say about yourself, and then optimize for that. Does that address after? Yeah, and I think Arun said earlier is really communication will do so much that you have no idea you can hide 
an elephant in communication or you know, an absence of knowledge in communication and good communication and, and, and good asking and, and understanding. It is sometimes you hire people empty, empty, no understanding, but they're so good communicators, you feel like, okay, I, I still want them. Now, I know that they don't know much, but I, I still want them because they basically will help people like in my team. So or I would like, also if you're amazing, but if you don't communicate it well, you will really sound like, okay, I'm not sure this person really understands what they say. So when we say communication, it's not like you talk a lot and stuff. It's about valued, like, you know, listening and asking and being proactive. So basically being proactive to ask, being proactive to answer and being proactive to, to kind of, um, you know, understand the question you are asked and trying to address. If you don't understand it, then to say, okay, you know, what is, you know, what is the question? I'm going to figure it out. I'm not going to let it down because it sounds so crazy that I don't understand. But if you persist to understand the question, if you don't understand, and then um, people would like you for making their life hard, unfortunately. You know, you don't remember people who just go under the radar. They are just people that they are nice, but you don't want them. You really like people who put you in a spot, who kind of struggle and fight and kind of want to understand. They probably ask you the same thing again and again until they understand. And then you realize this person is all I want for my company because it's not a personal relationship you feel you're building. It is value that you're producing. So I would say being nice, it's good, but it may not count in job environment. What is What really more counts is that are you doing your job and do you do everything necessary to do your job, which means not go under the radar, just not take the comfort zone of not asking, of not you know responding, or, or of not just trying to really zoom in to understand your role or their role or the question. So I think, yeah, with that, we can stop probably because it's way over time, but um, yeah. Great. Cheers, guys.